House Bill, actually Senate Bill 895, which has been brought to the Senate floor by Senator Pat Brown of Allentown, in which he is declaring for all time that Pennsylvania make this its own, the Pennsylvania Long Ride. Now why is the question? What is so important about this tool? Well, for one thing, calling a Pennsylvania long rifle a Kentucky rifle is like calling an ox a bull. He's glad for the compliment, but he would much rather have restored what was rightfully his. Think about it, you'll get it. The Pennsylvania long rifle is that important to our state. It helped us to feed the family, to clothe the family, protect the family, to rewrite the history books. And the fact that this gun was built at the hands of gunsmith right here. Whether it was the Neihards or the Kuntz or the Hawks or the Henrys, on and on and on. Pennsylvania had a huge gun building industry where they matched the native hardwoods with the native wrought iron, and then through the skill of their own hands and eyes, they put together not only architecture that worked, but worked far better than anything that was coming out of Europe. George Washington <coughs> asked for Pennsylvania to raise eight regiments of riflemen. Guess what? He got 10. It was that self-reliance and that spirit of volunteerism that we have in our state that made people come forth and want to defend their land. And guess what? Pennsylvania was one of the few states that didn't pay its soldiers. We were volunteers. And that spirit of volunteerism and self-reliance and independence runs through all of us even today. And it comes from the long hunter the self-reliant one, the one who could feed his family, who could make things right. This rifle has a lot of history. It was basically an evolution of the Brown Best musket from England, the Charleville musket from France, both of which were smooth bores and literally couldn't hit the broad side of the barn from here. The warfare tactics of the early 18th century, the French and Indian War, the Europeans would line up in a Napoleonic square and they would then volley fire against the enemy. Very inaccurate, but it sure was impressive, made a lot of smoke and fire and noise. It was actually the Indians who used these guns, who taught us how to use them effectively by hiding behind trees and rocks. And it were these tactics that Washington discovered in the failed Braddock campaign, later in the successful Forbes campaign, to take Fort Pitt, back then it was called Fort Duquesne. And it was that, that early lesson that gave George the idea that he needed guys from Pennsylvania with their Pennsylvania long rifles to defend this country. And defend them we did. One of the earliest victories that we had in this country on the plains of Saratoga up in New York was won decisively by Morgan's riflemen who were recruited from your ancestors right here in the Jim Thorpe area and the Lehigh Valley. This rifle became iconic around the world because of the United States winning its war of independence. It lasted in the hands of long hunters as they moved down the Shenandoah Valley, out across the Great Plains to the Mississippi. It changed a little bit at the Mississippi, became a little shorter in the barrel, a little less heavy in the stock. It became a Plains rifle or the legendary Hawkins style rifle. It went to the Rocky Mountains, at which point it started chasing critters a whole lot larger than what we had in Pennsylvania and the rifle above. But today, this rifle is held in museums all around the world. The Tower of London, which is probably one of the biggest military museums on this planet, has a huge collection of Pennsylvania long rifles. 
they were that important and they were that impressed by the ability of this rifle to shoot accurately out beyond 200 yards. When you go to Pennsylvania's Penn Museum in Harrisburg, you're going to see a lot of Civil War stuff. And believe it or not, these are there. But unfortunately, we have uh, a Mayor Reed right now running Harrisburg. He likes the Civil War stuff a whole lot more than the Revolutionary War stuff. And for that reason, the Landis Valley Farm Museum has on display Pennsylvania rifles. And near and dear to my heart, and I hope all of you come down and visit, the uh, Jacobsburg Historical Society has the Pennsylvania Long Rifle Museum. And we not only have on display guns much finer than the one I'm holding, but we have interactive displays and maps on the walls. It's a great place for kids to visit to learn the real history of what was going on with this gun. Again, I would like to invite all of you there. We have a proud history in Pennsylvania of being self-reliant. What does that mean? It means we don't wait for the rest of the country to get around to taking care of our problems. When we were sick or injured in the 18th century, friends and neighbors visited each other, carried the medicines, the herbs that were useful in curing the problems, taking care of the problems. When we had economic woes, my grandfather was a dairy farmer. In fact, his farm is where Macy's now stands at the Lehigh Valley Mall. When we had the Great Depression, half the people in Allentown came and worked in his fields. Not for money, he didn't have any. But he shared all the crops that were raised in that field. And that spirit of independence, I think, is still alive and well right here in Pennsylvania. And we need to start utilizing that spirit. Too many of us are waiting for the government to give us something. That's not how our ancestors got through life. And that shouldn't be how we get through life, waiting for somebody else. We need to take it upon ourselves to look at history, to learn from history, and to be a result of that history, to help one another, to be actively involved with good organizations like this historical society and the other benevolent organizations going on in Jim Corp. We need to all pitch together and say, united we stand. It's that simple. United we stand. Divided we fall. Long hunters are the iconic symbols of that self-reliance and that spirit of independence. And I know each one of you have that in you too. And I invite you to come up here, take a look. My mother used to say noach. Come up and noach the furs. Come up and take my bag apart and look at the little round bullets that go in the flintlock rifle. Take a look.